I was um, going to kill myself like two days ago and hang myself off the bridge. I had the rope and everything. You're a little sad today. Why is that? Um, this is... So you're going to prison today? Within the next few hours, I'm sure. I'm just feeling hopeless. You believe in God? I do. So you've had a Christian background of some sort? Yeah, I was raised with a Christian background and um, I've encountered many experiences with God revealing himself to me. I backslid because of the choices that I made. Well, let me share a Bible verse with you that I think will put its finger on what the problem is. Have you heard of Luke 9:62, where Jesus said, whoever puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom? It's saying if you're a Christian and you just even look back, there's something radically wrong. Now let me see if I can put my finger on it. Do you think you're a good person? I do think that I am a good person, but I think I've made bad choices. Do you like going to the dentist? No. Most people don't, but the dentist is actually your friend, not your enemy, because he's trying to save your teeth. And he'll even do things for you that are not very nice, like he'll probe your teeth. Right. He'll touch a raw nerve and give you pain, but he's doing it to find out what the problem is so he can drill it out, fix it, so you keep your teeth. So I'm going to do a little drilling. I'm going to do a little probing, and it could be a little painful for you, but what I'm trying to do is see your soul saved, which is far more important than your teeth. Hear what I'm saying? Right. Can you be patient with me? Yes, sir. Okay. You think you're a good person. Here begins the probing. I'm going to use the Ten Commandments. How many lies have you told in your life? I've told many lies. Have you stolen? Of course. Have you used God's name in vain? Of course. Love your mum? Very much. Would you ever use her name as a cuss word? No, but I've done other things to hurt my mom. So I'm trying to make the point is that you've taken the name of God, the holy name of God. Right. The godly Jews won't even speak or write down because it's so holy and used it as a substitute for the S word to express disgust, which is called blasphemy, very serious. So far you've said you're a lying thief and a blasphemer. Do you still think you're a good person? I do. Okay, I'm going to try and get rid of that because it's decay. Jesus said, if you as much as look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Of course. Sex before marriage? Very much. Angela, I'm not judging you, but you've told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, a fornicator, an adulterer at heart, and you're self-righteous and saying you're a good person when it's obvious you're not. You're like the rest of us. So, if God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty? I would be guilty. If you die in your sins, you'd be guilty, and the Bible says you'll end up in hell. The New Testament says no liar, no fornicator, no right. thief will inherit the kingdom of God. So can you see you're in big trouble? Oh, very much so. You know what contrition is? I don't. Contrition is sorrow for sin. Are you sorry for sinning against God? I am. The Bible says godly sorrow works repentance unto life. So the way of salvation is to be sorry for your sins, to repent, and then put your trust in Jesus. Now tell me, what did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? He died on the cross for our sins. Yeah, he suffered and died. So I was um, going to kill myself like two days ago and hang myself off the bridge. I had the rope and everything. And all I can think about is how Jesus was beaten to death and he died on the cross for me. and. If he could endure that pain, then I could face the unknown and deal with what I have to deal with instead of going out like a coward, you know? So that's the only reason, because I kept saying I wasn't going to turn myself in, that I would kill myself before I ever spent the rest of my life behind bars. I looked across and saw you walking across that bridge, and I thought, I cannot ride my bike up there and pass you because it's too narrow. So I waited for you waited for 30 or 40 seconds. Normally I just try and get past you because I'm going somewhere and I believe God's hand is upon you. He doesn't want you to take your life. He wants to change your heart and give you a love of righteousness. So let's go back to the cross because this will change everything for you if you can get a grip of this. The Ten Commandments that which we've looked at are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Yes. Jesus paid the fine. Right. Do you remember his last words on the cross just before he dismissed his spirit? It is finished. Oh, it is finished. So we broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. And when he was saying it is finished, you're saying the payment is made. If you're in court and you've got speeding fines, someone else can pay them and a judge can let you go. The judge can say there's speeding fines here, but someone's paid them. You're out of here. Even though you're guilty, you walk because someone paid your fine. And even though you and I are guilty before God, serious crimes against his law, against his commandments. 
He can let us walk. He can forgive our sins. He can wash us clean and grant us everlasting life as a free gift, all because Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood. Remember John 3.16, for God so loved the world. That's you. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So when you come to Christ, when you repent and trust in him who died for us and rose again on the third day, you don't come from to clean up your life or make things better. You come because you're a sinner and you need your sins forgiven. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. A lot of people come to Jesus because the preachers have told them Jesus will make things better and solve your problems. But that's just not true. Things can get worse when you're a Christian. Correct. You know? Yeah, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. He comes when you're doing the best. So Christianity doesn't offer a smooth flight, but it offers a safe landing. And when you repent and trust in Jesus, all your sins are washed away. You've got everlasting life. And then whatever happens to you, God promises to work it out for your good. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to those that love God, to those who are called according to his purposes. So today, let's, let's get right with the Lord. Let's truly repent, trust in Jesus, and let him direct your life from now on. And if you go to prison, he'll, he'll use you as a burning light in, the, in that darkness so you can share the gospel with others. We get lots of letters from prisoners who say, I'm in the most wonderful place because I'm getting to share the gospel with people who so need it. So is this all making sense? Yes, sir. You going to think about what we talked about? Yes, sir. You, do you want to yield your life to Christ now? Do you want to repent and trust in Jesus? Yes, I do. Can we pray together? Yes, sir. Father, pray for Angela. I thank you for this divine encounter that we met today because you're the lover of a soul. And may she, may she understand the cross, that it was an expression of your love for her as well as satisfying eternal justice. You're expressing your mercy and your grace and your love for sinners such as us. And may that break her heart. May she be truly sorry for her sins. And this day be born again, putting her hand to the plow and never looking back because you have made her fit for the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to give you a Gospel of John, and I'm going to load you up with in and out cards. Okay. You got a Bible? Um, I don't think I can take it in there with me, but <laughs> mail it to me. <laughs> yeah, let's stay in contact, and I can send you stuff. I know how to do it. I know how to get things to prisoners. You got to get go through the got to go through the chaplain. But I'll make sure we do that, and we'll we'll take care of you and stay friends with you. So let me get you that Gospel of John. Hang on a second. Thank you. Open it up. That's really cool. Okay, I'm going to get your address. I'm going to find out where you're going, and we're going to stay in contact, okay? Make sure you check out the Living Waters podcast and this. It's everything I've ever learned in 50 years of apologetics and evangelism. Get your copy of the Evidence Study Bible and check out the starter kit while you're there at livingwaters.com. If you are moved by this video, you'll really enjoy one that we called a divine encounter. You've got to see it. To watch it now, click here.